consider that a lot lies on the recruitment process, which is why it is pivotal for hiring to be made on well-informed decisions based on skill and expertise. Essentially, unbiased, well-researched, and fast because, well, time is money. However, this process could be enormously taxing, not to mention lengthy, taking up days and even months. You can now say goodbye to all your hiring woes with Speed Hire, a smart, savvy, and swift way to assess talent for your organization. Assess faster, better, together. All talent acquisition needs taken care of in just one click. Here's a truly dynamic, AI-powered, comprehensive assessment platform to make your hiring process smoother. Speed Hire merges the potency of three powerful platforms into one. Speed Hire assesses candidates with AI-powered platform. Speed Hire Live conduct remote interviews, even code tests. Speed Hire Advanced – Role-Based Assessment Simplified Speed Hire – Assess multiple candidates across geographies with just a click. Automated assessment of multiple coding assignments in one go. Saves time and effort. Improve hiring ROI. Unbiased Hiring – Build winning technology teams with unbiased insights, not instincts. Speed Hire is based on artificial intelligence, offers assessment in 54 languages, vast library of 15,000 plus tech questions for assessment. Speed Hire Live assess tech skills in real time coding environment, built developer friendly code editor, works with Google Calendar to notify the recruiters and candidates about relevant dates. Online chat feature to connect the interviewer and interviewee. Speed Hire Advanced Role Based Assessment Simplify your talent search for various roles. Four defined roles Just pick the role that you are seeking. Advanced Algorithm will help you find the right candidate from your own database and remove those who don't fit your hiring criterion. Revolutionize your hiring process. Start your free trial today. Visit our social media handles or connect with us on marketing at speedhire.com and corporate care at speedhire.com. Great. So, technical hiring is all about building great teams to develop great products and services. In the new normal, remote talent assessment has become a major way to scout skill talent, especially for the tech roles where the tech portion defines the success or doom of a process. Each role has its own unique set of required skills and different levels of seniority where entirely different sets of requirements are there. Those distinctions paired with constantly changing technologies makes it challenging to nail down a repeatable, sustainable hiring process. But how do organizations ensure to recruit the right talent? How do HR and tech leaders work on strategies and processes for a fair technical assessment? All this and much more will be over the table while our esteemed panelists from the tech fraternity talk about and share their valuable insights today. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in welcoming Mohan Eskate, Principal Consultant, ACTS, ATCS Inclusive, Mohan Gade is the client partner, engagement lead at ATCS with over 17 plus years of IT experience. He is known to handle key mark accounts for ATCS. He supports clients in managed services, application architecture, cloud modernization, big data analytics, business development, KPI, and reporting. During the quarantine, Mohan mastered his cooking skills, growing indoor plants, and playing tennis, picked up the fourth grade math and ELA skills. The second panelist, Sakib Khan, Executive Director, Delivery Collabora Inclusive. Sakib has 14 years of experience working with Collabora, a global total talent solutions focusing on cloud, data, AI, engineering, and delivering these services through staff augmentation, IT services, custom training solutions, and many more. In his role as ex Executive Director, he is responsible 
for building a strong recruiting and delivery team that can help deliver these services and also designing and implementing multiple strategic initiatives. Our third panelist, Vipul Valamji, Senior Engineering Talent Leader, Ultimetric. Vipul comes with two decades of industry experience across multiple technology and domain. He strongly believes that we all live in a digitally connected society, which is driven by human interaction and connection. People first has been the key to his success and belief that a company's most precious investment is its employees. Our fourth panelist here, Jagat Jitirok, head of product, Tegik and Speed Hire from the Times Internet Limited. Jagat has 11 plus years of experience, of which he has spent five years in Times Internet. In his current role as a product lead for Tegik, he works on building the Tegik community of close to 4 million Techies and enterprise tech assessment solutions to assist companies hire better developers. Before this, he has worked on a couple of startups in the e-commerce and consulting spaces, wearing multiple hats, including tech and business leads. So without taking much time, I would just request my panelists to, to give us an opening remarks. Can we just quick, uh, quickly start with Sakit? Hi, everyone. Thank you. Thank you, Sukriti, for a brief introduction. Uh, uh, excited to be part of this event today. Uh, I, I'm based out of Charlotte, North Carolina. Uh, I've been part of this uh, uh, IT services industry for past 14 years. And, uh, you know, my job, uh, basic core job is obviously managing a team that is day in and day out, identifying the right talent for our customers. So I'm at the heart of everything that we are trying to discuss, uh, you know, and especially with the advent of technology and uh, uh, post COVID uh, remote and virtual working has become a norm. It's, it's increasingly challenging to really identify the right talent. And in fact, uh, technology was already making a lot of advancements uh, in past three, four years. Uh, and I think it has only accelerated in the last nine months uh, uh, to make sure that, um, you know, hiring decisions are possible even virtually. Right. Thanks, Akib. Mohan, can we move to you and have your opening remarks, please? Sure. Uh, hey, thanks. Thanks, Kriti, for the introduction. Uh, Mohan Gote. I'm based out of Atlanta, Georgia. Uh, and I, as, as Sukriti mentioned, I have over 17 years of uh, experience in uh, managing clients. Uh, so I'm mainly on the delivery side, but I'm, I'm also responsible for uh, hiring the right talent, uh, especially the technical talent here in the U.S. and also globally, uh, which, uh, which we work with India as well. And uh, and yes, uh, you know, as mm -hmm. as COVID has hit uh, us hard, uh, we had we had the initial downs, and now it's coming back up. But but I think everybody is now realizing that technical work can be done remotely, and that's going to be the new norm. Um, uh, and and I think we are prepared for that. And and getting the right people is 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 actually going to be the most important thing because. Because you will not interact with them on a on a face-to-face -face basis regularly, so so the way uh, I think communication is going to be the key. So getting into uh, the the uh, finding the right talent is going to be further more challenging as well as uh, interesting. And uh, I think we are looking forward for uh, uh, for the new challenge, and uh, we are preparing ourselves uh, locally as well as globally on how to uh, use the right platform, how to make uh, you know recruitment. Uh, uh, seamless and strategic, um, and I'm looking forward for the discussion. Thank you. Thank you so much. Vipul, we'll move to you. Yeah, thank you, Sukriti. And uh, uh, I'd like to first uh, thank Saki, Mohan, and Jagdi to be part of uh, this conversation because I'm really looking forward to this. Uh, for this next one hour where we are going to talk about a lot of topics and discussions around uh, talent, hiring, and in this uh, new uh, age of uh, digitalization. A um, couple of things that, which are very close to my heart and I, uh, it's part of any organization is people, right? Meaning uh, we have to invest and we have to invest in the right kind of people. Um, and how do you invest? How do you bring in these uh, talent into your organization is a very, um, on the outlook looks simple. You go up, take a couple of interviews, you understand the engineer, you understand the talent, hire, but it's not that simple, right? Every step has its own intricacies. Every uh, stage has its own uh, detailing and conscious effort from an organization that has to be done. Um, we at Altimetric, I'm part of Altimetric for last uh, three years and over two decades of experience across multiple uh, product and uh, uh, service-related organizations. We in this company are very clear that 
we are investing in these people and that's our asset right the product that we build the a service that we provide is a by product of the investment that you have made on these people and if we don't do the right process of bringing these people in if we don't give them the right experience of bringing uh, going through that journey right it's not only a company investing that time we also look at how does these people spend that few hours or few days going through the cycle of getting interviewed right that is also very important because if you give them that green channel path or a path which feels very comfortable the uh, probability of the person joining and being really good is very high so i'll stop here and back to you priti on that note true 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 very well said uh, vipul uh, jagat will move to you and uh, may I have an opening remark from you uh, thanks sukriti uh, pretty excited to be part of this uh, conversation uh, i look after the enterprise uh, assessment bit of techgate so we help a lot of companies uh, take data driven decision support by doing tech tech assessment so in the covid times i have seen companies transition initially initially struggling with business continuity figuring out their business continuity then moving on to figure out how do they keep their hiring uh, continuity in place because the norms had changed you are not people, meeting people face to face so how do you how do you remotely assess people how do you take remote interviews objectively and then how do you how do you onboard them without actually meeting them uh face to fa- face to face so that's a new norm that we are seeing and a lot of companies have uh kind of accepted and oriented themselves to the new norms uh there's a lot of innovation which is happening in the hiring and the hiring tech space uh thanks to covid it has accelerated there's a lot of demand side need which has come up uh mostly uh with respect to how do you hire the right talent because there are different dimensions to hiring right you have the tech aspect uh some of it uh, which can be automated with the technologies that we have and there's the skill uh, the soft skill aspect right uh, is this a person who's the right fit for my team does he have the traits which are a right fit for my company so those are dimensions that companies are looking to uh, assess uh, on on at scale remotely so uh, we'll discuss many of those aspects as we go uh, through the conversation uh, i think it's going to be a very exciting uh, next one hour conversation thanks sukriti first of all i would like to thank each one of you for being a part of this session and i look forward to a super exciting discussion and hope that we draw some great insights uh, from the discussion that we are looking forward to as we speak we are live on speed hire and tech pages of facebook and youtube now let's just kick start the conversation so the future of work has already arrived for a large majority of the white collar workforce and according to the latest data from the world economic forum which reveals that 84% of employers are all set to rapidly digitalize their working processes including a significant expansion of remote work with the potential to move 44% of their workforce to operate absolutely remotely with radical shifts in business operating principles the approach of work the economy crisis the roads to critical business success everything is going to change and hiring strategies would need to align with the, this change and prioritize and support with the targeted processes of uh, intervention in place so i am i'm, I'm like really keen to hear a little bit from each one of you that how have you defined your roles at tech uh, sources and maybe uh, share some insights into the nature of your tech uh, resourcing vipul uh, we'd like to kick start uh, from you sure thank you sukriti yeah so um uh, i i was very uh, happy to see the uh, speed hire uh, demo which ran right because uh, that's something which uh, is very important right how do you have a standardized format and how do you uh, have an assessment which is very standard in an organization that you don't have to reinvent for every job profile and uh, luckily for me and the organization we have been following a pattern Uh, uh or a, a product a internal product we call it as playground and it's very uh, simple in terms of how do you orchestrate the end to end journey of a candidate uh, through the interview process right so what we have is a, a air tech assessment uh, coding challenge uh, 
so tech assessment is mostly a multiple choice question and there's a coding challenge depending on the levels we have a pair programming or uh, it's a coding submitted based on a automated test suit which runs on the code to validate whether the code has done uh, its intended uh, 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 activity uh, that is followed by a, a mini project this is pre covid we used to have this uh, teams of people walk in and then we used to give them a mini project so four five people used to huddle together uh, build the product we also made them sell the product to us so we are looking at a candidate who builds something and is has the conviction that they have built it right to sell it to us also right uh, but post covid we have sort of shifted the gears uh, instead of the uh, uh, a collective project from multiple people you are giving them uh individual projects which they do it remote and uh, uh comment or do the same thing over a video conferencing that's the only shift but then the project is there people build a very small project walk through the details of it and uh, then uh, we follow it by with a very simple whiteboarding right and all through this process our intention is very clear except for the first mcq which we call it as an elimination cycle everything else is a selection cycle we post the first stage want to hire the person and it's the prerogative of the candidate to exit the cycle not from us we will give all possible uh, help to candidate to see if the candidate can become successful the reason we put that sort of a mindset is at a job at a day in day out activity the candidate is not sitting in an ivory tower and building something right that engineer is constantly talking to his peer that engineer is constantly actually doing a stack overflow search or a google search and finding a snippet of code and adding it to into his production code so that's the ecosystem that engineer is working on then why do we need to uh, build an assessment platform which is built in an ivory tower right assessment platform need to also find out whether this candidate or an engineer can do the same thing can collaborate can the engineer work in an ecosystem where there will be people who will have their own opinions and still try to solve the problem so that's been one of the successes for us and uh, so uh, yeah so nutshell we have an um, uh, mcq coding round um, project followed by a whiteboarding and all through this cycle we coach the engineer we we do have dedicated coaches as uh, our own employees who act as coaches we don't call them interviewers except for the first round as i said they coach this engineer or candidate to see if they that ca that candidate can become an employee right so that's a very important role in fact we the to become a coach also we have a process in our organization that not everyone can become a coach we groom them to become a coach and as i said we are bringing in these uh, people from an um, different world into the world of altimetric and we want to make sure that they fit and we want to make sure that we create the culture of let's work together to become successful then we are putting it's not a gating process for me if i have to put it in that wonderful so you are actually trying to uh, you know collaborate with everyone and take everyone along uh, in this ecosystem that you've built a uh, wonderful uh, so if we would move to you and uh, we would like to understand from you that what are the tech resources and what are your plans in your organization that you are you know putting into the uh, streamline sure uh, and most of the hiring that we do as a company is for actually our end clients uh, because those are the clients that are having those projects and i would say that obviously post covid as i said in my opening remark it has only accelerated but even previously because most of the hiring is now happening in a digital space every client is going through that digital transformation journey uh, increasingly it was very important to reduce the cycle times right and even before covid uh, most of we were having these dialogues with our customer to provide them with custom built solutions whether it it in terms of ai assessments i think multiple choice question and coding is something people already touched based on but uh, how do you ensure that you basically reduce the cycle time Uh, how do you avoid a hiring manager or their team doing five or six rounds of interviews versus you can give a complete package to the candidate uh, to the hiring manager which could include video uh, you know a, like a, a video interview instead of just a resume right where a candidate can talk about themselves for 3 to 5 minutes right uh, that can easily eliminate uh, even judging a communication skill of a candidate right where a candidate is able to express what their strengths are 
and what are the key areas and, and they can briefly describe what projects they have worked on. Then they can move to the technical assessment round where uh, based on the client requirement there can be customized uh, training assessments that can be built. And there are different tools that we are using. Uh, there are certain internal AI integrated tools that we have built ourselves, as well as there are certain tools from outside which are easily available like HireVue, which can easily look at an algorithm of the words and the choice of the words the candidate is using whether they will fit in a particular company's culture or environment or not. And that software is much better versus removing that manual inter intervention from a recruiter where you can be subjective in your evaluation. Whereas this AI-based algorithm tool can really give you the right guidance that whether this candidate with the choice of words they have used, the, the, the camera that they have used and how many times they are kind of, their body language and everything it depicts to show whether this candidate will fit in their environment or not. Apart from this, I think, uh, you know, it is very, it has become more and more important with remote working is that we seek to understand what the hiring manager is looking for. Uh, because I can tell you a lot of times the job descriptions that the hiring managers write, they, they would easily go to a glass door or on the Google and type up a job description, to be honest with you. That is the typical tendency that any hiring manager has. Nobody takes that time to really craft a proper job description. In fact, there are software tools now which you can use to craft a proper job description that can eliminate certain words which could lead to bias, like, like very competitive and determined. Sometimes you tend to be biased towards a certain gender, right? Or being collaborative and cooperative, you know, you can be tend to be biased towards certain gender. So there are software programming tools that hiring managers can use now to really craft their job description to make it more neutral and appealing to the right audience that it is catering to. And that way it removes a lot of bias in your hiring process as well. Okay, uh, just a quick follow up onto what you uh, just mentioned that uh, you just talked about the qualitative analysis of a candidate, right? Uh, whether, uh, you know, through video calls, you'll be able to just uh, evaluate that person is, uh, you know, going to fit into the ambience of uh, the organization or not and uh, things like that. So do you think that, uh, you know, uh, a technical assessment tool, especially when it comes to the qualitative part, is, is like not biased and gives you a fair uh, evaluation? What's it your take does, on to, that? to an extent because you have a proper uh, structured approach to it versus, you know, a lot of time what happens is hiring managers tend to have a lot of unconscious bias that exists. First of all, it's very important to understand what those unconscious bias are, right? A lot of times we have ability to say, my gut feeling says this person is the right candidate, right? So it's very important to give a likability score also during the interview process, right? Like if you have 10 parameters you are judging the candidate on, give, give one parameter as a likability and then maybe rate the candidate nine on 10 if you like him. And maybe other candidate could be seven on 10 or six on 10 based on your likability. And then if you do the comprehensive evaluation of judging them on all those parameters, you can still arrive at the right fit. And some of these software tools and technologies can eliminate those human biases that could be existing. So it's not just qualitative, even from a quantitative perspective, there are coding assessments. If you, if you also wish to hire somebody at a, at, a, at a senior level or a executive management level, then you have ability to evaluate their work samples, or you can give them a scenario of your work environment and ask them to provide a solution to it, right? Or come and present that, how are they going to come and do this uh, uh, in their environment, right? So there are a lot of things that you can use to really make sure that you know you can you can negate the you uh, the in person need to really evaluate a certain candidate all right so uh, basically it's it's all about maintaining the balance between the qualitative analysis and the quantitative analysis that we have through assessment tools right uh, mohan we'd move to you and uh, i would like you to add your inputs here and tell me about your tech resources that you have in atcs yes so uh, for me it's it's kind of a mix of uh, uh, you know, uh, recruiting to the clients, or, uh, as well as recruiting for our own uh, projects. So since we we are in both models, uh, I think the most important thing uh, when when I I'm, I'm going to talk about the first uh, first point where we have to recruit for the client, where we are doing staff augmentation. Uh, I think the first important most important thing is to understand the requirement. You know, as Sakib uh, rightly said, because sometimes. They, they just mm -hmm. write three lines. They're saying that they want, uh, you know, they want a project manager. And then once you start questioning them, they say, oh, no, they, oh, I, oh, I forgot to mention they need 
they need to be scrum certified they need to be you know project uh, pmp certified so so these kind of things uh, you know we make sure that we understand uh, that um, the the detailed requirements and and then we uh, we start the process from our side and and again based on different kinds of requirements um, I, i think if it's technical we also have um, something uh, some some sample you know uh, programs that has been created by our own uh, you know our own uh, tech leads and uh, and it it basically checks whether uh, and based on the experience it, you know it it checks whether this person can be uh, is good at programming is good at uh, you know not just programming whether he understands the whole splc whether he understands agile whether he understands um, you know how to branch how to do a git branching you know when you're branching the code so so these kind of things are uh, are you know uh, are evaluated uh, and we we do have like we don't have like a tool yet to 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 manage uh, the especially the lateral hires but we 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 make sure that we use these kind of samples and we go Uh, across and and when they talk about their projects and their roles and responsibilities we make sure that they they really talk about their responsibilities not just hey, somebody has done this and i only integrated this part so you want to understand whether they understand the big picture or not i think that big picture and making sure that uh, they can contribute at a different level like how you know even people said like if i'm good at programming but if i'm not able to articulate what i've done very well then that means that there is a there's a gap missing there so and since we are we are in in the us at the heart of you know representing atcs and the client i want to make we want to make sure that the guy is able to communicate that you know and and those are the key aspects that we look for when we do uh, you know hiring for uh, staff augmentation but but for for our internal hires i we we are, we have a tool where we do a technical assessment and uh, this technical assessment is again uh there is the sample uh, questions are also some custom questions are also fitted by our own uh, developers just to just to keep it more uh, intriguing and challenging uh and then this is all proctored so this way if somebody is you know is 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 writing a test or taking a test there uh, we it, we're making sure that they are you know they are focused and uh, and all those aspects and again we'll talk about ai it was great what what i saw as a as an introduction uh, you know the video where everything is driven by ai that, that's where everything is going i think but but once that is cleared i think we we then we then talk to the candidate uh, and then the way we avoid the bias is is obviously um, you know if somebody is extrovert he is able to communicate really well uh, you know sometimes we might get carried away so we 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 make sure that you know we touch upon all the requirements uh, with, uh and and again there there could be you know uh, uh you know there could be some uh, something that could be missed but but in 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 our, in our case when we have we 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 basically look for their technical skills and then we look at their uh, you know uh team skills and then once we feel like they're we're you know we're confident we we go ahead and hire them and and most important thing is is obviously the culture the atcs culture you know we want to make sure that they fit into our culture and that is a is a hard hard uh, you know uh, thing to find out so we generally do like you know have a probation or we coach uh, them uh, about our what are we trying to build how are we trying to build a cathedral right what is atcs all about so all that kind of coaching is done uh, in the initial you know uh, uh, assimilation uh, and uh, and we we watch them for first three months we have mentors we have buddies we assign all of them and and we make sure that as long as they are you know they come into the company they they should be happy they should be satisfied they should they should have you know good good understanding of who we are so so we make sure that process is is clean so uh, so that's you know that's and then i'll touch upon you know when we talk about global how we do it in india uh, so i would like to you know uh, stop stop this here so so that uh, we can discuss further so sure. uh, jagat uh, we would like to you know uh, add your experience and your uh, fundamentals of uh, you know since we have speed hire of course uh, i am sure that you will have a different uh, prospects to share with us here in terms of uh, how important it is uh, to, you know to actually quantify and uh, evaluate uh, the skills of a candidate and uh, since all of us are working remotely uh, we have we had a discussion earlier also wherein uh, a lot of uh, leaders and our experts spoke about that uh, how remote working has entirely changed the way we are working so jagat uh, i would like you to add your valuable insights here please 
so sakib touched on human bias uh, people are what their experiences are and uh, people will ha- have biases because of the experiences that they have had that cannot be uh, eliminated so when they are uh, looking at someone and evaluating him for hiring they are looking at him with that lens so you they have a uh, people have a certain perception that people from certain colleges are good having a certain kind of background are good so we cannot do away with those lenses when you are hiring uh, a person in technology there are two dimensions to it uh, as i said in my opening remark there's the soft skill bit is the person a right fit for my company does the person has the tech skill set which is needed to do justice to this role so these are the two dimensions the first part is something which can uh, be automated with the technologies that we have the second part is something that uh, in a sense there are uh, platforms which will help you define the persona and also they will also tell you that if if you want want a java developer who's at a 6 to 7 years of experience in your company this is the kind of persona that you should be looking at but you'd still need a person to meet to speak to him evaluate and look at whether he's a fitment for the company the other bit the technical bit is more or less sorted you can uh, create a test paper which is the same for everyone at scale you can uh, let people take the test and it gives you a scaled uh, ranking of everyone so you ob- you can you have objectively defined who's good and who's not good on the parameters and the benchmarks that you have set you have set so you don't need a line line managers to be evaluating that to a certain extent you still need a line manager to look at the depth of knowledge that he has because the assessments can do uh, so much right you do an mcq and then follow follow it by a coding round there is uh, only a certain bit of skills that they are evaluating what the companies are also looking at now are scenario based questions in which you give them a scenario and they come up come out with a solution but uh, when we look at the tech assessment bit and everyone is going through the same set of assessment a lot of those uh, biases are uh, kind of are, are minimized because uh, it's standardized everyone knows what their score is and its objective cannot be refuted so i think a platform based approach is going to help us eliminate a lot of those bias- biases on the soft skill bit people are trying to uh, given that everyone is working remotely people are trying to figure out solutions on uh, how good this person is on the software aspect uh, to give you an example we have had feature requests from com- from companies uh, things like when the person is giving the test what is the confidence level is that something that you can capture their face and figure out what is the confidence with which he has given the image what is the emotional state in which yep. he is giving the uh, test is, is he happy is he stressed out Uh, uh what is the emotional state those are things that people are looking for from a solution perspective uh so i think technology is going to be a solution for some of the aspects that we are looking for for some of the other aspects it will be it will take time uh, for technology to uh, get get there and these will be uh, tools which would help someone uh, take the decision uh, these will help 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 a human take a decision they are not going to decide uh, decide for you for some time right so uh, i will just move to my next question jagat which is actually uh, you know very interestingly brings down to uh, the hiring portion of course so uh, you know the covid scenario uh, which uh, was uh, you know in india especially it's a global situation right now and uh, in india the whole impact uh, started off uh, from february and or march i should say so uh, you know during the time a lot of uh, job losses of course a lot of recession had but there is still there is a buzz right now of a lot of hiring in the uh, it market so uh, while the hr managers have been saying that the productivity has increased tremendously uh, what are the core competencies that uh, you know you as leaders look for while recruiting a uh, programmer or software engineer remotely i should uh, say so uh, we would like to start with mohan here so yeah so i think um programming is the key aspect uh, for you know, for any uh, any role uh, especially on the technical aspects on the technical side so let's say you're looking uh, to to hire a lateral uh, and uh, and as 
as digitization and modernization has become uh, you know uh, a new norm and every everybody is uh, trying to migrate from uh, from their legacy to 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 their new uh, new journey uh, we we especially look for uh, you know uh, resources who are uh, who are uh, who have exposure to cloud uh, tools and technologies so let's say for example i'm looking at um, a java application programmer right um, so we will we'll still have to check their their basic their fundamentals about java so what we typically do is you know we 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 make a we do a round of of core java itself because i i if i'm if i'm interviewing i, I start with the object class in java that's like the core fundamental class you know how how do you how do you use that how do you use multi threading how do you use the reflection so so core core fundamentals is still the key uh but and if the fundamentals are strong i think i think you get a good feel that okay this this is you know we are going in the right direction i think fundamentals uh testing is really important for me uh and then go to the next layer where you know where there is spring and these new frameworks that are helpful for cloud migration we go into spring spring boot and all these kind of concepts and how uh, how can how can they do domain driven design you know microservices and things like that so again you cannot expect everything based on the role let's say you're looking at an architect then you look for you know wider range of uh, you know skill sets if you're looking for a senior developer you look for uh, especially the fundamentals as well as you know exposure to cloud and and uh, you know the latest like containerization and and everything is code now even the whole platform could be built as code so and the most important transformation that i have seen is the devops right previously you know there was a separate operations team you used to hand over your you know uh, code to them and they would deploy but but with uh, with the advancement of the technology you know the whole operations can be also done by the developer so so we would look at some of the core skills like you know fundamental programming skills uh, the sdlc skills agile is also the new norm everybody has to work in an agile environment i think process is is key uh, as well as the devops part of it so so combining that we would do like you know first as a fundamental round and then do like a uh, you know more detailed round give them scenarios give them context based like how did you solve this kind of a performance problem uh or 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 you just you know sometimes you ask out of the out of the you know uh, questions like hey what do you don't like about java like everybody will say i like about this i like but what do you don't like about java so things like that will make them think uh and then we go into you know the the final rounds and and we make sure that technically the the candidate is is capable and then can also contribute in in a team environment and can take us to the future because because some the some candidates are like are not very adaptive to new technologies like if somebody has worked on the mainframe then they would want to work on the mainframe and and for them it's like a big change so we also look at the attitude as you know how quickly they can adapt uh, what is their learning uh, 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 and and how how they spend time outside of the work right like if if somebody is 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 really techy or is really interested he would he would be knowing the new trends you know what is happening in in let's say mobile apps development what's happening you know in the modern uh, javascript development so these kind of things are are also interesting for me especially when i talk to them uh, i i try to find out you know how how connected they are to what's going on in the current uh, you know current uh, uh, setup right so uh, sakib we would we would just move to you for this question that uh, you know since you're also an uh, subject matter expert so we would we would like uh, like to know from you as well that what is your approach uh, towards this so i think uh, mohan did touch base on a lot of technical piece of it which which is pretty much common these days for assessing anything i think post covid especially in a virtual environment some of the traits we are seeing that are really going to drive is you know their personality trait their interpersonal skills because it's a very different uh, approach to working in a office environment where you are collaborating with uh, your business analyst or your architecture or you know different teams and it's a very different approach you need to take when you're working virtually so some of the things and you know softer skills takes art is taking a lot of precedence you know what type of ownership of work that person can take right uh, and you know technical skills i'm not saying it's it's easy but technical skills can be taught but some of these personality traits are built over a period of your lifetime right like right from your schooling your college you know like these are certain characteristics that a person displays right you cannot build this 
over you know like okay overnight somebody will automatically start taking ownership if that person was careless and in his approach and everything all of us started tomorrow he will not going to start taking that extra level of ownership so we are seeing more and more increasingly that some of these qualities is going to truly be the differentiator between a top talent versus an ordinary talent right somebody could be a really good solid technical guy but if they are not able to collaborate you know work in an environment in this virtual world then they will be a misfit uh in a lot of companies i can tell you similarly also we are seeing that you know increasingly what these tech tools have done is right uh, earlier you have to coordinate various interviews with multiple level of hiring managers check their availability because of this video tools and ai tools right uh, it has enabled a candidate to take an interview at any time of the day right they could be working from 8 to 5 30 and then they can be free in the evening take those tech assessments take those video interviews you can email it to the hiring manager whenever you want it they can review it whenever they like so it has given a lot of flexibility to hiring managers to really identify that top talent and among the pool of the talent and also the speed and agility that it is providing uh, to make sure that you know earlier it was all about there is a war for the top talent right now it's not just about the war it's a race for the top talent right so the speed and agility is going to be the key and and all these tools are giving those hiring managers the tools to really identify the right talent uh, because in all said and done the it unemployment rate in us is still very very low right uh, irrespective of whatever unemployment rates have gone up in past 9 months or so the it unemployment rate is still very low so there is still a demand and supply gap right and it is increasingly important uh, how do you you know kind of uh, you know complete that demand and supply gap right there are various uh things that companies are trying these days like an early talent program because you are not seeing those talent easily available there are different immigration uh, issues that everybody is facing right so how do you train that top talent and uh, you know even even mohan tajbe something on that digital mindset and everything there are various assessments out there to really assess you know you know where that candidate is in his digital mindset journey because it's very important uh, you know it's not necessary that somebody who is an engineer is only aligned with the digital mindset there are people who are not probably engineers but they are creative they know how to really build stuff and they can also fit very well in your digital uh, environment so it's very important for us to really look at the software aspects along with everything that we will do to train them or technical assess them Exactly said. A, a quick follow up uh, from this, Akib. Uh, do you think that the technical assessment platforms that are available in the market? I'm sure you you've uh, gone and tested a plethora of them. So, do you think that uh, you know they ensure a quality of assessment which is like not compromising and uh, it it definitely gives you the accuracy of skills that you are looking at for your clients out there? I feel that you know technology is continuously evolving and it is something that is is going to improve as we get better. in articulating our need and if we are able to translate that properly into assessment of a candidate then we can definitely bridge that gap right there are multiple tools out there and each tool has its own pros and cons right but i think it depends whether you are doing mass hiring for one type of skill set or you are doing selective hiring because the only challenge is you'll have to customize it every time for the need that you have that is the biggest challenge you face with this technical assessment tools but to an extent again it can be a leading indicator it is not the only indicator for your hiring process right so you cannot just blindly rely on that tool and think that this is going to be answer and solving all your problems uh, it is very important that uh, you know there is a structured interview process that a hiring manager is still having uh, because a lot of times we have seen that you know there is a lot of unstructured interviews that take place right so it's very important that that hiring manager is asking the same set of questions to say different candidates because that way you can easily remove that bias hiring bias that uh, you know jagat talked about as well right uh, an example i can say you know as as jagat mentioned that it's it's all about what you have seen and the you know you have experience like for example i'll give you if you have never seen a male kindergarten teacher right you will you will tend to always associate and hire a female teacher right but uh, th- those are some of the unconscious bias that exist even in hiring managers mind right and it is important to first of all be understanding of what biases exist and then you can automatically remove it through that structured interview process where you are going to rate them on you know what are the areas that you are going to assess them so uh, to answer your question in a nutshell technical assessment is a good leading indicator but that cannot be the only indicator 
great uh, so uh, actually just this this brings down to uh, you know uh, to me to ask jagat that uh, you know jagat how are the core skills in the market are being tested and what are the kind of assessments that uh, are being done we would like to know this from you so so kriti the core skills uh, the core skills which are being tested they remain the same uh, how they are being done that is differing so when you look at freshers what are the core skills which are being evaluated problem solving uh, aptitude demonstrated learnability so these are essentially the three things uh, the platforms help you do that when you are looking at freshers as mohan alluded to if you are hiring a java developer you are going to test them on their core java skills first and then maybe depths of a spring boot or uh, any other framework uh, initial pre covid the framework bit was being done on a one to one interview because most of the platforms did not support it now that uh, now that we are we were in a covid scenario there was a demand for testing many of these skills on the platform itself can we give a spring boot project a small spring boot project to someone they build build an application and that is then evaluated by someone uh by an evaluator and can we have a conversation around what has been built can the person explain his approach to what has been built so those kind of uh, platform enablement are things that we have seen happening not just on speed hire but across the industry because there was a need in the market for for that the one to one interview focuses on people's approach so uh, you might have solved a coding problem there are different dimensions to even the coding problem have you solved it uh using an algorithm which is not very optimized versus have you optimized the code versus have you written the code in a way that it is maintainable so these are different dimensions which are also looked at when you are uh, evaluating someone on the core coding skills but the way the platform has uh, the pl- the platform need has evolved is uh, the coding bit and the uh, domain testing bit was already there with the mcqs and coding but the scenario based uh, assessments are something which we have seen getting enabled on the platform because there was a uh, demand in the market for that and that is then followed up by a one to one interview through a platform in which people have to explain their approach for how they solved a particular coding problem or how did they build that app so many of these frameworks are being enabled on the platform uh, uh, people are uh, using the platforms to do many of these assessments and then there are having conversations on how people have approached a certain problem it's not just about doing the core uh, skill evaluation on the platform and then doing everything else offline so a lot of uh, what was happening offline has been pushed to the platform people are comfortable uh, using those and then doing the discussions in the interviews and taking it forward right so now i will move to uh, vipul we will have a question for you that is you know when it comes to evaluating the accuracy of uh, candidates performance uh, do you just look at the test scores or you have other qualitative parameters uh, you know of technical assessment such as memory consumption code length time taken etc okay uh, again uh, i'll split it into two parts right one is the technical aspect of it yes as part of the uh execution of uh the use case as i said as, as i said we have the mcq the, we have the coding round but at the use case or the uh project that they are doing has to take care of the memory consumption has to take care of number if if i have to run it in a low cpu low uh, latency server would it uh, do the same performance uh, uh, responses as required so we do have those checks as part of our use case execution cycles right uh, that is for sure an aspect uh the other aspect of the code which we look at is also the best practices so so in our platform we already have those best practices uh, code uh, code reviews right so we have sort of automated that in our platform which a lot of goes through the codes and sees whether they have used the right naming conventions have they uh, did the did the right indentions have they uh, kept a variable which they never used or have they overused few variables so there are some best practices checks also which are part of our uh, uh, playground process right so that's uh, the uh, best practices aspect is very important then the non functional requirement that's what i think you are alluding to is very important when you are doing the uh, 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 check 
I also want to uh, touch on what uh, Jagat was saying, right? MCQ and coding is not enough. You need to have a use case uh, uh, challenge. You need to run them through a project mindset. And that's when uh, uh, what even Mohan was uh, uh, pointing out, you will know whether this person can work in a real life uh, uh, world, right? Gone are the days where you expect uh, them to write four lines of code and say, yes, those four lines are good. We need to see if how they are able to take it to the production. And very important aspect of all of this in COVID is um, the learnability aspect of it. In fact, I won't say learnability, it's a self-learnability aspect of the individual becomes very important. I'll tell you a simple uh, uh, example and the reason behind it. In a pre-COVID era, when we were used to being in an office where, where there used to be people around and if someone is stuck in something, Yes, they would Google Stack Overflow, but the easier approach for them was to tap on the shoulder of his uh, a friend sitting and say, hey, this is not working. Uh, what should I do? And the person would quickly give him, him or her a solution. That is not available today. Right? That, does not, that experience of an individual has sort of been wiped off. Yes, you can still ping someone over the chat and ask, but then that person is not available to you at that time. Now, in this scenario, the self-learnability skill set of an individual becomes paramount, right? How do I learn on my own? How do I tap into the resources of uh, uh, the internet or the resources of the company and their confluence pages or, or experts in the industry? How do I tap into those uh, areas and self-learn and then maybe I will have someone who can reconfirm my understanding, right? We are shifting from learning from my colleague to reconfirming from my colleague in this COVID situation. So uh, I did answer your question on the first part, uh, uh, Sukriti, but I wanted to touch on the self-learning part as part of the COVID uh, angle. And that is one key aspect or a, uh, assessment we do as we try to hire anyone in, in this era now. And so, Kriti, piggybacking so, on what people, said, there are tools out there. There are tools out there that can really yeah. evaluate their behavior, personality traits, like the self-learning ability that he talked about. There are cognitive uh, tests mm -hmm. out there which can really help you judge whether this candidate and and you know nobody can fool that test easily, right? If you are not a self-learner, then it will be automatically be visible when you take that test. So that is why the, some of these technology tools become so relevant and important in this age and world. Uh, because, you know, you can't just go and ask this candidate to a uh, question to this candidate that, hey, are you a self-learner or, you know, how will you depict that that mm -hmm. person is a self-learner or not? Very true. Right. Uh, but uh, Sakib, I, I want to know this from you and Vipul both that uh, maybe I am like, I believe and I assume that uh, this is very much relevant and uh, would cater to uh, maybe uh, when we are talking about hiring 10, 15, or maybe a, a hiring which is like a smaller unit. But what about when it comes to bulk hiring? You know, when, when people opt out for bulk hiring, maybe you, you know, into the organization or into the IT industry, which does that. So how do you think that uh, this is like very much relevant when it comes to hiring a lot of people altogether? Uh, see, uh... Again, uh, if I understand the question, you're saying in the bulk hiring, how do you still uh, take care of all these things? Uh, is that exactly because right? Yeah. Yes, uh, before we were because what you talked about was on individual levels, right? You know, uh, creating that ecosystem where uh, a person is you know comfortable, a person is you know giving his best to learn, and since we have you know all of you have those mentor paths also, so I would like to understand that what is your approach for when you know, when you hire so many people at the same time. So actually, we don't do any different, anything different, right? Uh, some of the use okay. cases of uh, our India hiring, uh, we have hired in a, in a given day almost 30 offers just by following this approach, right? It, again, oh. it's about okay. how do you multi-process uh, things? How do you parallelize these processes, right? How do you bring in people? How do you have 50 laptops ready? Again, in US, we don't do this level of bulk hiring where we have to hire 30 people in a day. It's uh, three or four in a day is really a good uh, pick for a US market for us. But in the Indian market where you're hiring, like you are, you are looking at hundreds of people to be hired in a month and also, we have done this exact same process, MCQ coding, coaches being there, coaches being assigned four or five engineers, 
they sort of uh, if if you know the chess game where there's a, a master a, a chess person and he like plays 10 people chess similarly a coach is there who is coaching 10 people there right uh, again the coach is not sitting and telling the person what to do the coach is telling them or nudging them saying did you think of this did you think of this variable might hit your memory management that inducing and then knowing whether the person is able to self learn um digital era we are still able to do that now it's much more easier because i have 10 screens i have 10 engineers solving my problem as a coach i'm monitoring all 10 of them and i'm also looking at their code at the same time so uh, the scale is not a challenge if you have the platforms right right uh, if you are uh, and again at the end of the funnel is going to be tricky uh, the bottleneck hits when you are at the last stage and that is going to be tricky there is a human intervention required from my point of view you cannot take away the human aspect of any of these things which sakib already uh, touched right uh, there are uh, products but at the end of it there has to be a human uh, connect which also reinforces what the systems have told in fact sukriti i can say that you know in fact mass hiring can in fact be you know you can really speed up the process using these tools if you look at it right in fact a right. uh, lot of companies are now going they are going blind for a resume review process where they can remove the demographics name so that there right. is no unconscious bias towards a candidate and then there are various tools through which you can you know hacker rank and rank those candidates based on you know what what experience they have and their profile and everything so those tools can help you easily shortlist candidate maybe 100 candidates from a pile of 1000 candidates right and then uh some of these tools uh which are flexible where a candidate can take a video interview or do a coding assessment in fact this can really help hire you candidates in masses versus for you to really interview 200 candidates and then shortlist another 100 and then they make them go through another round of interview you will end up wasting so much of your manpower to really do the hiring process versus these technology tools can really speed and up and enable you Right, you said, Sagib, and I am sure that uh, you know we have been constantly working upon innovating these uh, technologies to you know cater to the requirements that are in the market and uh, what our clients or uh, maybe you know the IT market is actually looking at when they want to hire uh, certain people for certain profiles, for that matter. So you know, I would like to now know that uh, how do you plan to strategically move ahead with the technical hiring process, and what are the kind of innovations that uh, you know all of you are looking at? So Javier we would like to uh, start from you. So Sukriti uh, as I said earlier what covid has done is it has accelerated the innovation process in the HR tech space and a lot of it is uh, demand driven because there is a certain need in the market people are looking for certain kind of tools to be addressing those uh, those needs. now there are different aspects to it one is how do we how do how do we do assessments at scale uh, the second aspect is how do we maintain integrity of this those assessments so these are the two dimensions in which we are going to see innovation if we look at the first one uh, when you are doing assessments people would want those assessment to make their life easier right so when you are doing a coding assessment you get a certain score that this person has got 80 out of 100 is better than someone who scored 50 out of 100 that is one part to it the other part as uh, uh, sakib had alluded to was uh, is the code optimized uh, and also vipul also touched on it the, is the code written in a way that it follows good coding practices so, so those are the different dimensions so there's a quantitative dimension to it you get a score which helps you decide and stack rank people on the basis of the score then there's a qualitative aspect to it that are important because you want certain kind of people to come into your company and the same thing is happening uh, uh, happening with happening across uh, across think like if 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 we if i take the case of say spring boot so currently what i am constrained to do is give people a spring boot project they'll do the project but you'd still need a person to evaluate that project can we automate part part of the evaluation and give a score to it the give some kind of quantitative score to it some kind of functional testing which will tell okay this is an application which is functionally working a person might still need to evaluate it so those are the kind of innovations that i see happening uh, because of covid uh, many of it is has already happened uh, 
So when we look at speed hire as a platform, we support things like Spring Boot, React, uh, uh, and many of these these frameworks. So the architecture is ready. Any of these frameworks can be fit in, and then we can uh, give people a some kind of sandbox in which they can come build the application that could the, that could those then be evaluated. The next bit will be how do we give a quantitative score to what the, the application which has been built. It could be something like an Android app. You do a functional testing, you come up with a score so that when 1,000 people have gone through the test, you have a filtered list of 100 people that you want to look at. Then the next bit will be whether the code which was written can be run it through some kind of qualitative analysis which will add to the matrices that we have, the quantitative matrices that we have. So those are the different layers that we that we will be uh, seeing going forward. And a lot of it is driven by because people are working from home, because uh, pe uh, people are looking to scale up their hiring processes and they want to uh, focus their time on things which are important. So if I am speaking to 10 people and I'm dedicating my time to evaluating those 10 people, then they better be the best 10 people. I don't want to look at 100 people and then cut down to 10 people. That's a waste of a lot of resources. So there's a demand in the market for... Uh, innovation in that space to make it make life easier uh, for everyone. And as Sakib alluded uh, to, these, are, these would remain decision support tools for a really long time. They'll give you data points, they'll give you all kinds of matrices which will help you take the decision, but you'd still need a person to be looking at those data points and taking that taking that decision. We, it, we are still years away from a stage in which you would get a score and then you say, okay, this is someone I can roll out an offer letter to. We'll get there, but not, not in the near future. Right. So I, I believe that, you know, for qualitative analysis somewhere or the other, we still believe onto the human touch that uh, we always had as uh, human beings. Uh, you know, Mohan, I would like to move to you and I would like to know that what are your plans in terms of strategizing things in future for ATCS? So um, we are looking at uh, some of the tools, um, some of the industry best uh, uh, tools, um, and uh, we are trying to onboard those tools to 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 essentially uh, break it down to you know a cognitive tests uh, like checking even checking the aptitude, checking the number sense, you know checking uh, even even language sense, right? Because communication is the key in this in this remote. Uh, COVID scenario where you know people are able to communicate quickly, respond respond to uh, you know a question in a paragraph. So so that's that's one aspect to it, and the second aspect is obviously the technical aspect, and it will still need manual intervention. But I think I think that is one space where we are going to uh, look into more of these tools and try to um, um, uh, get get going in that in that uh, area. I think the second most important thing is to to make sure that we have KPIs for the whole hiring process. Uh, you know, previously we used to you know we used to talk to people. They used to come. You know, we interview and take two days. So with this with this COVID and everything virtual, one person can take five interviews in a day, which was not which was not you know happening before. So the the if you are if you are delayed in in writing in, in writing an email, let's say let me do it tomorrow, and and you know that candidate might go tonight. So so I think we are going to add KPIs uh, to to evaluate each and every uh, step in the process right from the time you know the requirement was put out, the candidates applied. So this way we can improve uh, our own performance, our our HR team's performance, just to see how uh, how we are you know reacting to to the recruitment process, and and that will definitely help us. Uh, you know, not to miss out on any and and everybody wants quick communication now, right? You know, as uh, they want to know sooner. Hey, what what's what's next? What's next? So so we have to we have to uh, and we are we are continuously trying to improve that and and that's where we we want to go. And apart from that process and also improving the the quality, you know, once once the employee uh, once he once the candidate becomes our employee, we are going to make sure that the employee is you know is engaged at all levels. He gets uh, he gets the right training. He is happy with what he's doing. He's learning, you know, what he wanted to uh, learn, and and he has a good work-life balance. So, so this way, we we are going to invest more on the employee and their trainings as well. Where then that could, you know, help get us more referrals and you know uh, improve the the quality in general uh, on on the whole process itself. 
and and also the next step is we we, are, we will try to also um, do you know open more on the internal transfers and things like that which will help you know a pivot if somebody is not happy with this role he can go to some other role and so this way the talent is still retained and because talent retention is also the most important thing not just recruitment right so so there are aspects to that uh, but this is essentially you know tracking down to a right tool and then uh, building kpis to to manage the whole recruitment process is where is what we are looking at this year interesting mohan and i believe that uh, you know with technology advancing every single day uh, i mean five years down the lane uh, you never know what all tools we'll be talking about and how innovation would actually address our requirements in the near future uh, vipul i would like to know from you about you know what strategies do you have at uh, ultimetric uh, to look for and uh, how do you plan to move ahead sure so uh, one uh, thing which covid has brought in is that uh, people are able to work from any part of the world right they are not no longer talking even about city right um as far as the engineer can align with the team's time zone or times doesn't matter where the engineer is working in which uh, brings in from a strategic angle a very uh, important point at least that's that's directionally where we are going is uh, no longer silicon valley is the few 100 miles on the west coast right no longer the banking sector is uh, banking technology domain is the few hundred miles around the new york city right the, the this covid has literally told that you may you even have someone working out of a remote city in arkansas or mississippi for a major projects which is happening in silicon valley and you're not expecting them to travel and that opens up doors and Uh, skill sets and engineers which were untapped before right there are many people who used to sit in these remote cities working for the local uh, uh, companies and what didn't did not um, uh, take the um, uh, they are not brave enough to move into those major cities because of various reasons right cost lifestyle a lot of things now we are literally opening up the doors for everyone you are not doesn't matter your which place you are sitting in as far as you have an internet connection you are good at what you are doing you are part of the big big system now right that shift is uh, is something which we have already started tapping in in fact uh, uh, because of this change we were able to fulfill a lot of requirements that we had in uh, silicon valley which, which which was not very easy before right so strategically we are looking at a global workforce in fact uh, if i have to talk about my uh, uh, india uh, hiring we are in fact shut down couple of our offices because we no lo- we know no longer that we're going to have those engineer walk into an office right um, a, a very simple use case for india compared to similar to us is like uh, nagpur is something which we can now open a 10 member office if we need to we don't need to have them travel to pune we don't need to have them travel to bombay we we'll, we can still have someone working out of nagpur or the remote locations of india right as far as they have the connectivity so strategically that's a big change for us and that's that's something that uh, i think everyone is going to ad- adopt and many of people have started adopting it already um uh, from a, um uh, something which uh, uh, again uh, jagat also brought in one of the other things which we want to also do is uh, or we are already doing uh, partially is how do we uh, look at what we have done look at the reports look at the kpis look at the numbers that we have and then start using algorithms to sort of predict some of those things right so that's another uh, area of uh, focus that we are doing um I, i i don't remember the second part of the question but i think i've taken care of the first part if you can remi- remind me the second part of the question please a uh, short sure. so it was it was just about uh, you know how do you plan to move ahead uh, further with the processes that you are placing and streamlining sure so um uh in terms of, so first part i already told we have started working on it because that's that's something that we are doing second part is where we have already working on a, a fungibility matrix or if i have to say competency score which has techno- technical non technical uh, a lot of other uh, parameters which sort of brings down the bias Uh, but said this uh, i want to uh, also put a word of caution to people who are listening right all the ml algorithms that has been written right has been written on existing world data right 
um if an algorithm is, is it, if a model is running it's running based on a training data set which it has picked from real world which unfortunately is already biased which means your outcome of the ml algorithm tends to be biased also right so we need to be very very careful in picking up those algorithms and even if post algorithm like everyone has been telling about this that is not the end of this uh, uh, that's just the beginning then there has to be a human intervention to revalidate what has happened right um, and this is very important because we sometimes think ml is going to take away bias but let's be clear that it is it has learned how to do its processing based on already a biased data right right a uh, very insightful thing i should say uh, before thank you so much for sharing that like if we would just quickly uh, you know have uh, some remarks from you and uh, what are your strategies when it comes to your organization sure I, as i mentioned i think uh, pre covid there was already a certain level of technological transformation happening and we were adopting some of those strategies in our day to day work i think post covid it has only accelerated it uh, typically if you look at recruiter who was talking to a particular candidate and identifying the right talent and sub- sending it to the hiring manager it, it was a very admin and a very monotonous task uh, so how can automation and ai tools uh, help you uh, stack rank the candidate and the job of the recruiter then becomes less salesy and it is more you know they, they have to become more aligned with the business and the business acumen comes in the picture that's where it is very important uh, for us as a company and and a larger you know companies that are having larger talent acquisition engines is uh, that team should know what the business wants and it is very important for them to understand the nitty gritty of technology uh, and that's where the learning and development becomes key uh, i think a lot of times our leaders they tend to underestimate the appetite our people have for learning and post covid we have only seen that people have a strong desire for learning and they want to learn a lot of new things and i think uh, that can accelerate uh, the path towards all this technology innovation that is happening i think people touch based a very important point that a lot of these ai ml algorithms can be biased because eventually humans have trained them so the bias comes from human right so it is very important that we just don't rely on one set of tools uh, the only thing i can see now in moving forward future is a cv or a resume could probably become redundant uh, i know there are certain uh laws that you know people don't want to discriminate by looking at a video and judging a certain candidate but in technology space i think that bias is slowly and steadily you're getting reduced as much as possible in certain industries outside of technology those biases could exist but in technology space i think those biases are you know consciously or unconsciously getting removed and if this video tools can be used to evaluate a candidate quickly and then you interview them i think uh, a lot of times uh, you know i don't know and it can be a bold uh, forecast but i'm sure the 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 art of writing a resume and submitting and a hiring manager reviewing it uh, could become a thing of past very soon so that is how we foresee a lot of things obviously on demand staffing gig work i think we pull touch based on that you could be in any part of the world and you could really do the job i think that is something that will take a lot of uh, uh prominence uh, in the future as well and i think that is how we are building ourselves to make sure that uh, we are we are able to kind of adapt to this uh, changing landscape uh right uh, sakib and uh, you know to yes uh, if you wanted to add something no, no, i was just saying on a lighter note sakib you just gave a product backlog idea for jagjit jagjit <laughs> <laughs> okay so uh, you know to summarize of the conversation that we just had that uh, you know innovation technology uh, with the with the speed that we are moving uh, towards uh, it has enabled us to look for talent beyond boundaries and uh, you know look for projects and uh, people who could just make things possible for us uh, uh, you know going beyond our offices uh, you know office premises and uh, also it's it you know the most interesting part is that uh, we are virtually building relationships now uh, not in you know organically but virtually building relationships which has uh, which is again i think uh, innovation uh, in its part uh, it has been an absolute pleasure you know talking to all of you and uh, thank you for sharing your knowledge and experience with us and the trends of the uh, market with us uh before we conclude the, the session today uh, let us have a look at the demo video of speed hire to understand how it's aiding the technical recruitment processes for several organizations till date
Okay, so now it's time for me to actually have a closing remarks uh, from all of you. Uh, Sakib, we'd like to begin from you. No, thank you. Thank you, Sukriti. It was a pleasure to be part of this uh, uh, roundtable discussion. And I think uh, a lot of learnings from industry leaders and stalwarts like Vipul and Mohan. And uh, as I mentioned uh, at the start as well, I think uh, we have seen a lot of uh, technological advancement already happened pre-COVID. Um, so I think uh, the world was already preparing for this because there was so much of digital transformation that was happening. And this industry cannot be obviously completely aloof to what is happening. So there was, there was a lot of bias towards the way you hire, the way you identify the right talent. And there was a lot of inefficiency in that process. And what technology has done is it has definitely, uh, you know, brought some sort of, uh, you know, level playing field to a lot of candidates and also helped uh, organizations. Uh, you know, there are a lot of organizations which are targeting diversity goals. This, you know, uh, they want to make sure that they are fair, they are an equal opportunity employer. And I think this technology tools have only enabled some of these things. So uh, I can only see that obviously, you know, now we are completely remote and virtual. This will only go to the next level. Uh, the skills uh, that will be in demand, obviously, will continue to be there. Uh, and I'm sure it will only progress forward. But I think what is going to play a huge role is uh, that entire process will become very streamlined and will remove a lot of manual inefficiency that existed, which probably a lot of times organization could not tap into the right talent because of that. And I only feel that now with these tools and technologies, uh, organization will really identify the top talent in a in a very quicker time frame than they were doing previously. Right, Mohan. Again, thanks, thanks, Sukriti uh, and team for uh, for a good discussion. Um, again, as Sakib said, there's a lot of learning and a lot of uh, especially the speed hire itself. Uh, the demo was great uh, and. Uh, and and I think as uh, uh, as we are going into COVID and remote, I think the more the more focus uh, or the I think AI is going to play a key role. I think uh, AI based uh, tools uh, going forward, and you know again there will be still be manual intervention, but but I think um, uh, social behavior of a candidate uh, can be captured by you know by AI. And let's say if you have um, a uh, a pool or a, or a data store of all the resumes which are let's say two year old then you don't know what is the latest uh, technology that, that that candidate is working on so using ai you could you could look at the resumes and the ai can go to linkedin or any other you know uh, social behavior of a candidate what he's posting based on that it can give you know feedback to the to the recruitment teams to say you know what this guy you know has has advanced in his skill set so so I think that space is going to uh, uh, be uh, uh, progressing faster than I think uh, we had thought. Um, and and you know, IT and technology and is, is going to be there. Cloud modernization, all that is going to uh, uh, you know definitely uh, progress forward. Um, and uh, and I I think it's it's going to be it's going to be uh, interesting to to see next uh, you know couple of years how how things go you know move forward how there will be different trends to do campus interviews and things like that uh, so so looking forward for all of that uh, and again thanks for the great uh, discussion and uh, you know uh, really really thoughtful thank you mohan thank you so much jagat can we have a few words from you Thanks, Sukriti. It was an interesting discussion. I would like to thank Sake, Pohan, and Vipul for bringing in their uh, insights into the discussion. It was great learning for me. Uh, what we have seen is that COVID did accelerate the pace. Our product backlogs did get accelerated. So things that we were planning six months down the line, one year down the line, we had to do it now because people wanted it now. So interesting times for a person in product uh, to be in the space and uh, I was uh, pretty excited for what the future holds for us, pretty excited for what we are building and we are going to float out in the markets very soon and uh, it was a good discussion. Thank you so much. Thank you, Jagat. I'm sure, uh, you know, all, all of us have a lot of opportunities and COVID has partially, you know, accelerated and uh, given us that opportunity out there in the market. Vipul, we would like to have a few words from you. Sure. So, uh, first of all, thank you, Mohan, Sakib, and uh, uh, 
uh, jagat for your uh, um, great conversation right it's it's these conversations that take the industry to the next level and uh, some of the ideas that we discussed here uh, i'm sure are going to drive the uh, industry not only the organizations that we work in but the whole industry and thank you uh, sukriti and your team the whole uh, tech gig and times team for setting this up um uh, from a closing note uh, point of view right yes uh, platforms are important tools are important automation is very important even in the hiring cycle and right uh, we need a uh, companies which were digitally aware and had adopted uh, had a speed uh, breaker effect in the covid but they kept moving forward companies who were not prepared had to really accelerate really get into the bandwagon of adopting these platform at a rapid pace and that did hurt some of the companies in this industry so uh, being aware and being cognizant of a digital platform and adopting it is very very important uh, said that uh, we also need to always uh, as i said people first has been my success uh, story right and we need to always wear this human hat and see are we commoditizing the whole uh, uh, hiring process by bringing in a lot of automation and that should not be the intent of it right as an organization uh, from altimetric beat any organization that i have worked for me people are people that's it we are they are not they are not a resource uh, that we have started or we have uh, used to calling them as right people are people who are bringing in their expertise and the hiring process is actually a marriage that we are going to happen which is going to happen between the company and the engineer and yes these platforms tools technology has to be a means to the end but the end is going to be about the people not about the uh, platform that's my closing comment thank you sir thank you so much people and i'm sure that human touch will uh, still be valid and relevant even if uh, technology takeovers uh, you know all over the world in the coming years so now i would uh, like to invite uh, shikha sahani head of international sales tech and speed hire from times internet for the vote of thanks thanks so much sukriti for the opportunity and i would like to thank all the panelists and the wonderful audience that we have for a successful session today it was very brilliantly articulated by mohan sakib vipul and jagat thank you so much for your presence uh while there were a lot of takeaways from this session for me but the major one was that while the recruitment uh, industry is moving towards automation and digitization still i think candidate experience still is very important for us so i'm sure all of us are going to work towards that and make a wonderful candidate experience like me there might be a lot of people who've taken a lot of insights so thank you again for this session lastly i would like to take the opportunity to reach out to all the panelists and the audience members for a quick speed hire demo in the future and if in case you guys want to know anything about speed hire you can get in touch with us at corporatecare@speedhire.com thank you so much thanks a lot sukriti and thanks everyone thank you thank you so much rika thank you uh, thank you uh, you know jagat sakib uh, mohan and vipul for you know the precious and amazing cognition you have shared with us you all are like actually gold mines of knowledge i should say and uh, if you would like to use uh, speed hire and understand the exceptional features it has shikha and jagat would be more than happy to take you through it and i would also like to thank all our live audience for bracing us with your presence Uh, this is just the beginning of the roundtable discussions that we had. We are coming back with some more exciting India boardroom sessions on 1st and 8th uh, December 2020, and the US boardroom sessions on 11th and 15th December 2020. Do stay tuned uh, for more information. Thank you so much once again. Stay safe. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you.